Welcome back, everybody, to another wrestling review and commentary. I'm Randy, a.k.a. Dr. Wrecking Ball, along with my friend Tyler, a.k.a. the Friendly Neighborhood Caveman Elk. And we've got another special episode for you today. Tyler, t tell everyone about it. Today is going to be a super special episode, Randy, because we have another one of our great friends, another one of our wrestling colleagues, another one of the best minds in the business. He is the professor, Matthew Priest, a.k.a. Dave Harbison. Dave, great to see you. How you doing, sir? Great seeing you guys as well. I'm doing doing pretty good. I'm excited to watch some grappling with you guys. And speaking of grapplemen, don't you, uh, if people want to get a little peek into the mind of Matthew Priest inside of what Dave Harbison thinks about the wrestling business, isn't there a, a place that they can catch that? No, I have, I have a podcast. It's called Ramblings of a Grappleman. I, I find a topic and I deep dive into it. And, you know, if one person can take one little nugget from that and, and apply it to their craft, uh, then it's totally worth it for me. Uh, well, today we're going to have to use that big brain of yours and the, the, the multitude of wrestling facts and, and stories that you have. And we're going to apply it to a very special match. One of my favorite opponents, Maserati Rick. You're going to see Elk versus Maserati Rick. This is from... 2019 Age of Allegiance, uh, and, and there's a cameo by the, the priest doing the announcing as well. So, hope you enjoy. So, we got the entrance here. My least favorite part of my entrance is climbing into the ring. By far my least favorite. I was telling Keith it's because I'm so short, my legs are so stumpy, that that middle rope catches me right in the right spot every single time. And he suggested I go in like Miss Elizabeth, but... So maybe, maybe when we get back to the real world, we'll see what happens there. You can see oh, Matthew Priest there with that great jacket. No, that is or a really cool jacket. Like, where'd, where'd, you pick, where'd you pick up something like that at? Um, uh, a, a Christmas gift from mom, like, 15 years ago. Um, <laughs> actually, I think she got them at, like, a, whatever the hell AJ Wright used to be, um, or whatever it was back in the day. But yeah, I think she got them at some store. They were, like, I have, like, three of them I think. Well, I actually had four, but one of them got ripped in an angle. But they were like these fancy little jackets and um, you know, I thought they looked kind of cool. Gave me this because I used to just go to the thrift store and get like um, like old man jackets with the elbow pads and they were like plaid and stuff. And that's what Matthew Priest used to wear when he was, when he was a grappleman. Um, then I started ring announcing and traveling. Um, I needed to change up the look a little bit because a lot of promoters were not uh, looking for a guy who looked like he was a mishmash of 1975 to 1985 grandpa clothes. So um, I decided to change the look up a little bit there. The only thing that I, I kept from the old gimmick was the sweater vest. I used to travel and ring out there, and I still black button up and two or three little like uh, vests that I would wear. But because I was just gonna say, like you did an incredible job announcing that. Because that's something you were really oh, yeah. talented at. It's like getting the crowd fired up for the announcing like that is incredible what you do and you've announced like a bunch of places right not just in michigan but i think in ohio too right you did some announcing over there yep i, I did a lot of a, i did a that's really where i kind of honed my ring announcing craft was uh so i used to ring announce when i stopped wrestling in 2008 i started ring announcing towards the end of that year um in bcwa and that was every week and then when i was traveling I'd, on saturdays i had three shows a month and for the same promotion in ohio and um you know, that, that gave me a different perspective. But the main reason I always wanted to ring announce was because if, you, you know, when I was writing a show or booking the show, I was out there with the, with the fans. And I could, I, it was like how Vince would back in the day in WWF, he'd sit there and commentate. I think a big part of that was so he could see the product firsthand, ringside seat, and he could hear the crowd around him. And that's the main reason why I did it is because when I, as a booker, uh, you, you get the show out there. And if you're, sitting out there you're seeing every second of every single match you're evaluating the talent you're understanding what's getting over what's not and then you can go and help the talent in the back after the show um got a little hard to produce produce matches while while um, ring announcing but it could it could all be done and that's that's what i love about the business is, is the behind the scenes stuff and ring announcing really helped me understand and become a better booker that way as well so yeah. real quick here uh Matthew Priest. So that, oh, people always say like wrestling scripted, right? We've all heard this. Everybody always says, mm -hmm. oh, it's scripted, blah, blah, blah. The whole beginning there with the whole taking the shirt off with Maserati Rick. Came up with on the fly. That was me and him just out there. We call it working. Um, 
and then this whole section too i basically told uh we were back in the in the back and i was like hey man i don't really get to do a lot of like amateur wrestling stuff so this is what i'm gonna try when we're when we're out there but i never gave it like we didn't script it it's just you know brandon uh maserati rick brandon is talented enough to to go with it i guess you would say and like that's one of my favorite parts about wrestling is just like you said like the backstage stuff the, the the producing the the creative aspect of it as a performer this is my favorite uh aspect of it is being able to create something on the fly that hopefully the crowd gets into um we'll we'll see if they do <laughs> yeah see this venue i liked a lot i had a real good energy to it um this made event i remember being being amped for and and thanks randy on that uh that introduction because i do remember this being one of my favorite introductions i ever did do um yeah. you know, I, was, I, I was i was feeling it and it was just one of those days where you're just you're just in a zone and, and this venue had real real good energy and hopefully we can get back in there but but to your point tyler um you know we called a match on the fly with maserati rick before so some, yeah. the first time you were calling i'm on the fly with with rick but it's something he he likes to do something he's good at something we used to do every you know when we trained together and um you know, i worked a lot with with rick back in the day when he was first coming up and um every Saturday. Oh, it was a big move by. Is that? A, oh, it's like a Fez press. <laughs> that was like a side a, Fez press. That a Fez press. It looked more like like a crossbody. It wasn't uh, the best, but it was. You know, I, 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 I thought it looked cool. Well, I thought we it was all great hyped too. For this match. I was very excited to work with them, so I was like, I'm gonna try stuff. I'm gonna go out it, there and I'm gonna give it a shot. You, you landed like a. It was like a boss man slam with the way you landed. Yeah. Except you were the one flying into him, so it was like a flying body block. Is how I would call that if I was on the commentary. <laughs> yeah. Oh, with Maserati Rick, yeah. So on on set, when we'd have our training sessions, we would end every training session with just the, whoever was left over. It was usually six, eight, ten people, and we would just go tag match, and we would wrestle for forty five minutes to an hour. And just everything on the fly, you're calling it in the ring, and, and, and we just had a lot of fun doing that. So, you know, he's definitely a guy who's who's down for it, and and you know, working with a guy like you, Tyler, you're easy to work with um, in a match like that because you don't try to come up with a million high spots, and, and you cut a good pace. And and the right. secret to pro wrestling to me is reacting; it's not acting. So, you know, and right here, you just give him a big squash, put your feet in his face. He's just reacting to what you're doing. He's going to roll over here and feed to a corner. And set you up, let you walk across the ring. Give the fans over here. Let's show them your face there, kid. Come on. Oh, no, you're going to set them down. He gets chops on the way. There it is. <laughs> yep. Well, those are the Tricera chops. I went away from using those and I tried bringing them back a little bit. We're going to try to bring them back some more, I think. Tricera! But yeah, so. The, uh, yeah, absolutely. Working with absolutely. Brandon is great. And he, the way he sells it, the way he sold yeah, it. And, 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 well, I think everything too. He's like super athletic. Yeah, and that's, all that's, his his move set. Like I, I love his top row elbow drop. I feel like one yes. of the top, best top row elbow drops in Michigan. I love oh, I Brandon. Think, He's one of my favorites. Yeah, Boom! I think one of the oh. best elbow drops in the business. I think oh. there was a little bit of miscommunication between uh, me and him, and with, with that, that's another thing too. Is like I know that that's what happened, but if the crowd doesn't know what what happen it just looks like an organic like fight like we're fighting and w w whatever um but i'm pretty sure that I, he was supposed to move when i hit him with that big splash initially and then so we had to reset and kind of went right back to the same spot but kind of made sense a little bit after you hit him with that first big one and now he's he's working that shoulder oh. making sure the big man can't use his shoulder yeah, and, and if you notice the intensity, you know, he flipped the switch. He turned it up to another level here to, to, to get it on. He, and that's, that's the markings of, of um, in my opinion, of, of a good heel is he seizes an opportunity. You got hurt, he, and he pounced on it quickly and went right after the arm, went right after the shoulder. I'd like to see him dial up a little bit more intensity with it. But, you know, I, I understand, um, I, you know, I understand. And that, I think that falls on, on you as the baby face, too, is having a little bit more active selling. Uh, to feed that arm um, and, and, and build on that intensity into the heat, um, but no, I thought that was a, a good, good little you know for a, for a save on a, on the heat spot. It was like okay, this is our heat spot, but that's what that's what can be done is, is you, you hurt your shoulder and you gave him that opportunity, and that's all it takes for a good heel to get to get his heat in is um, yeah. is seizing those those moments, and um, you know and here he's going for the count out, which can't win this championship on a count out. 
Get it in the ring, young man. Yeah. I, I, I mean, this is a part of my career where I'm, I'm always trying to work in spots where I get to lay on the ground and sell. So nice little wind catcher right there. <laughs> and what I think is interesting about this match, too, is you have Elk, who's a fan favorite, who had just got over the poster gate story, just won that. And now he's going against uh, Maserati Rick, who's a fan favorite, part of Studio 86. So it's an interesting clash of, pun intended, of two top uh, baby face acts. So it's really cool seeing this. And I think the crowd's really into this. And they're really, Elk's getting sympathy, working over the arm. Really good stuff right here. Good referee, Rick Vib. Um, I think Brandon was actually a heel at this point because he was uh, beating Justin Maine with clubs at the end of shows or scepters. Did he have, was it a scepter or, a, or like a steel club? <laughs> It was like a lead pipe. He got the, yeah. but I uh, think he was the crutch at one point. Yeah, he flipped his ass with a few things. Yeah, but this was in that weird phase because like, Masai Rick was kind of turning baby. He was actually still a heel at the time in BCWA, but this, but the ass of Studio eighty six got over to where they were becoming. They, I think the show this was April right of last year. They had just transitioned into a a baby face like right around the same time. So. The fans that come to both shows are treating him like a baby face, but the fans who only knew him from Clash, they still see him as that old heel persona. I also think he might have came out to the Studio 86 song here, yes. which didn't do him any favors as a heel. Oh, there's a big ear fall. <laughs> Good guy to headbutt, headbutt, though. To the shoulder. Uh, <laughs> big move because because Elk's a big fella. And, and, and you know, Maserati Rick, he, you know, he's he probably barely in the heavyweight division, right? So he's got to do something to be able to get these big moves in on Elk. And I just thought that the diving headbutt to the shoulder was a great way to keep working that, uh, working the injury. So funny story. I remember that because we were talking backstage before this match because I was really invested in it. And he said he's not going to do the elbow drop this match. He's going to do the headbutt instead to let him let be one of my thoughts after. And I'm like, dude, the, elbow, the headbutt just as good as the elbow drop. Like, that headbutt looks so good. Yeah. There he goes for an arm bar. Yeah, so I was going to hit him with the big Slamosaurus, but because my shoulder was so damaged, couldn't hold him up, had uh, to let him go, and then he transitions right into a cross arm breaker or arm bar, depending on where you're from, I think. And that's a beautiful he hope spot because he starts to give you some big, some big shots, and you're starting to fire up like you're about to make that comeback. He hits the rope. The hope is there that you're going to hit your slam. People are thinking you're going into comeback mode. And then, he, you know, the shoulder gets out. He goes right back to work on it. And there's your big slam there. And, you know, hopefully hopefully you're not going to die here. Don't die on me, Tyler. Don't die on me, Tyler. Uh, well, there you go. it's out. There's a good chance he's going to die. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is good. You're still moving. You're still showing fight. You're exhausted. You're rotting that shoulder recoup. It's as easy as a commentator to call. And, you know, the story is there. It's just your window of opportunity. Yep, you, you died though. There you go. Keep moving, kid. And um, <laughs> you know he's pulling himself up with everything he's got. He's gonna come charging in. It looks like. What do we got here? Come back, big oh, mom. Oh, the elk. Yeah. <laughs> the, the the elk comeback I've been doing for years. Clothesline, back uh, elbow, big belly to belly. See right there with missed opportunity. Should have went for a cover because we had the crowd. We had them swelling up. And then there wasn't enough fire on the comeback. And then I end it with the exclamation point with the slam. And that should have been, boom, you know, a huge point. And then we would have been able to bring him down here. But instead, we dropped him. We lost him a little bit early. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, that, that's where that emotion and that intensity really comes in. I mentioned, yeah, yeah picking up the pace there. And that was, that was good with the belly to belly, your point. You know, even if you go for the cover and he kicks out, you can fire him up and get him in position right. for that spear. Um, uh -oh. And that that right there, you know, that's just a – there's your big spear. There's, that's got to do it. One, two, three, stick a fork in him. He's on. And I like that you guys went comeback finish there too. Um, yep. You know, maybe not in the main event, but then you guys were following some stupid, crazy tag match where there was like 72 near falls, I'm sure. So going yep. comeback to totally fine with me. Well, that's what I, I think, like, the Elk character, I mean, just my style in general, is more suited to the old school, you know, like a, the, the late 80s, early 90s, where you're going to get the over, hopefully we get you emotionally invested, and then as far as delivering on the match, you know, it doesn't have to be near fall, you know, near fall, near fall, near fall, 
we just have to make sure we keep you emotionally invested and then the you know and then we lead up to whatever that finish is going to be and then here's another thing i ripped that shirt off of them at the end and i wish i would have did it in the very beginning i think that would have got that would have been a better spot for the beginning when i was telling them to take the shirt off yeah or, or coming right out or from coming into the finish out of the out of the comeback like boom you you you, you hit the belly to belly he, he kicked out whatever you're firing up the spear he hits you with the big kick he works your arm over you go for the the whip maybe when you're going for the whip reversal you pull the shirt over his head spin him around hit your spear one two three and then you know the shirt comes flying off as he sells the spear that's always shit you can come up with in hindsight being 2020 um but again you're, that's why you don't know that you're going to work a shirt spot into a match but you know <laughs> right. those, those things that would be that would have been that would have been cool too and a good time to do it would have been right at the finish and it would pop the crowd all right well there you have it elk versus maserati rick what do you think matthew priest do you get hindsight you get to look at it obviously there's things you change and things that you wish you could do differently but overall sure. working with brandon for me always a treat um so what, what did you think no, i thought it was, a, it was a good little main event match uh it's the first time i've seen it back since it, since it happened live you know that's that's a that's a good little match where You've got an established heel. You've got an established um, uh, baby face, and you tell a perfect little story. I love the hope spot. That was the highlight of the match for me. Um, you know, and, and it was good. Of course, you know, to your point, there's things you can you can improve on and do differently. But that's every match, and um, I, I think I think even at the highest level, um, if a guy watches his match back and doesn't see something, um, then he's not uh, caring at that point in his career in the business because you can always find something you can improve upon, and. Um, yeah, no, it's always fun to see two, two of my friends get in there and wrestle. And, and you know, that, that was one where I wished I, I had a little bit more hands-on backstage. I think it was very hands-off with it. But, uh, no, I thought you guys told a really good little story, and, and I enjoyed it. Cool, cool. Yeah, Randy, you were hyped for it on the day. What did you think looking oh, back at it? Oh, it still, still, still holds up from when I first watched it. Um, it's funny, watching the video back, you could see me on the balcony with Nate <laughs> watching this match, because I remember being so invested in Elk and Maserati Rick. Uh, it was great. I love that you guys worked the arm, pull that story. Uh, it, it was great. I, everything about it, from the announcing to the end, everything was top notch, I felt like. So yeah, thumbs up in my book. All right, well, Matthew Priest, thank you so much for stopping by. Thanks for, for pro providing some d uh, deep wrestling insights into this match. And, and where can people find you if they want to check out some more of your insights? Uh, and get more of your thoughts on the wrestling business. Well, thank you very much there. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Matthew with one T underscore Priest with one T. Um, and then I have a podcast, Rambling of a Grappleman, easy to get to from my Instagram or my Twitter. Um, easy to find, but Ramblings of a Grappleman is available on just about anywhere you listen to a podcast except for the YouTube. Um, I haven't figured out the vid aspect of it yet. But, um, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, deep dive into pro wrestling. And uh, once again, that's rambling of a grappleman. All right. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Yeah, wrestling.